Episode 1 Li Susu returns to 500 years ago. The demon god is the embodiment of sin in the world, bringing disaster and death. The new demon god is Dan Tai Jun. The demon god and his subordinates came to the Xiaoyao sect and the Hengyang sect to search for the mirror of the past, hoping to see the legendary artifact that can end the demon god. Changza Mountain of the Hengyang sect, Li Susu, the daughter of the head of the Xianpai sect, learned from her senior brother that her father went to the Mo River to save people. Now, only the Xiaoyao sect and the Hengyang sect are left in the Xianpai sect. It is unknown how long they can resist the demons. They need to find a way to kill the demon god to solve the dilemma. However, the ancient gods were all destroyed thousands of years ago when they joined forces to kill the ancient demon god. Now, a new demon god has appeared. At this time, the demon god had captured Xiaoyazong, but the demon god couldn't open the past mirror with his magic power, so he forced Xiaoyao Zong Xiaoyu to open the past mirror. Cook Swanzi of Hengyang Zong led people to rescue the real Xiaoyu. After he rescued the real Xiaoyu, he teamed up with seeing Jingmaiyu, the demon god's subordinate, and then the demon god trapped everyone in the fairy sect with the marrow washing seal. He planned to shoot and kill them. Cook Swanzi and Master Zhao Yu were shot in the cheeks by Li Susu who rushed over. Taking the opportunity, Master Zhao Yu took back the past mirror, handed it to Li Susu, and took everyone away while the demon god was absent. Li Susu was the first person to hurt the demon god in 500 years. The demon god sacrificed the sword to deal with Li Susu. Li Susu lost to the demon god and was arrested. At the moment of crisis, Li Susu's mark flickered between his eyebrows, and Li Susu Su's blood also allowed the past mirror to restart. Entering the mirror of the past, Li Susu was told that the reason why the demon god snatched the mirror of the past was because it would have the power to reverse fate in the hands of the fateful person, and Li Susu was the fateful person. The demon god was not born as a demon, and the past is his only weakness. Li Susu learned from the mirror of the past that Tan Tai Jin, the predecessor of the demon god, was in Xing Wang Palace 500 years ago, but at that time, as a demon fetus, he was already accumulating strength for the recovery of the demon god. If Tan Tai Jin hadn't been able to become a demon back then, today's catastrophe of annihilation would not have happened. Li Susu needs to rush back to Hang Yang sect as soon as possible to open the light shattering array to reverse the universe in order to save the world. Brother Gongye came to give Li Susu time to escape at the cost of his life, and Li Susu successfully returned to Hang Yang sect. Chu Xuanzi and Master Zhao Yu learned about the origin of the demon god from Li Susu's mouth. Chu Xuanzi thought that Li Susu had to destroy the evil bones of the demon god before he could completely kill him 500 years ago. The real Zhao Yu opened the light breaking array to send Li Susu back to 500 years ago, while Chu Xuanzi and the real Zhao Yu finally chose to stick to the fairy gate to fight against the demon god. When Li Susu left, she saw that her familiar relatives, senior brothers, and sisters of the immortal sect were all destroyed in front of her eyes and vowed to kill the demon god Tan Tai Jin. Five hundred years ago, Li Susu was Yi Shi Wu, the second daughter of the general's mansion. Back to five hundred years ago, Li Susu woke up in the wild. She pretended to have amnesia and asked her close servant Chun Tao about her identity information. Li Susu learned that she escaped from the bandits on the way to Shengxiang and accidentally fell down the slope and fell into a coma. She ran away with Chun Tao and was soon caught up by the bandits. Caught. At a critical moment, a person came to rescue Li Susu's master and servant. Li Susu saw the other person's appearance and thought it was the elder brother, Gong Ye Ji Wu, but then he realized that this person was not the elder brother. But Xiao Lin, the sixth highness of Shenghua, Xiao Lin misunderstood Li Susu pestering him so he had to tell Li Susu that he only loved Yi Bingsheng in his life, and that he just rescued Yi Shi Wu just out of morality. After Xiao Lin left, Li Susu knew that this person was the only son of His Majesty, known as His Royal Highness Camellia, and Yi Shi Wu was in love with Xiao Lin before, and a few days ago, because of jealousy, he pushed his sister Yi Bingsheng into the lake to anger Xiao Lin. After Xiao Lin left, 
The bandits came back to look for Yi Shi Wu. It turned out that today was a drama set up by Yi Shi Wu to let His Highness Xiao Lin save the beauty. Only then did Li Su Su know that everything that happened today was just a drama. Before Li Su Su returned to Yi Mansion, she told Shen Tao to help her hide her amnesia. She asked where Tan Tai Jin was now, but unexpectedly learned that Tan Tai Jin was Yi Shi Wu's husband and that Tan Tai Jin was in the mansion. The person she was most afraid of was Yi Shi Wu. Li Su Su found Tan Tai Jin who was kneeling weakly in the snow. She tested Tan Tai Jin's identity, but was finally scared away by Tan Tai Jin's eyes that destroyed everything. Li Su Su learned from Chen Tao's mouth that he punished Tan Tai Jin by kneeling, because Tan Tai Jin rescued Yi Bing Sheng who fell into the water a few days ago, but did not save Yi Shi Wu who slipped into the lake. And Tan Tai Jin was originally the proton sent by Jinghua to Shenghua, but he has a strange temper and is not liked by everyone. Episode 2 Li Su Su's Soft Heart Towards Tan Tai Jin Although Li Su Su couldn't kill Tan Tai Jin now, she still wanted him to kneel on the ice and suffer. After all, she still hadn't forgotten the blood feud between her father and her senior brother. But in the middle of the night, the wind and snow intensified, and Li Su Su saw Tan Tai Jin kneeling on the ice, and the kind-hearted her felt conflicted in her heart. For many years, Yi Bingsheng has personally come to the porridge shed to give porridge on the first and fifteenth day of the Lunar New Year, which has won the praise of the people. Today she brought her servant girl to the porridge shed to serve porridge again, and Xiao Lin also came to help after finishing her work. And when the two finished serving porridge, Yi Bingsheng saw that it was getting late and had to leave and go home. When parting, Xiao Lin learned from the maid that Tan Tai Jin was punished by Yi Shi Wu to kneel on the ice, thinking that Yi Shi Wu would humiliate the hostesses of other countries. Tan Tai Jin had already been punished to kneel for the fourth day, and even the servants in the mansion laughed at him, worrying that Tan Tai Jin would freeze to death outside. Li Su Su sneaked out of the room to check, but Tan Tai Jin found him unexpectedly. Li Su Su saw that Tan Tai Jin was shaking from the cold, so he simply found an excuse to leave the cloak behind, but Tan Tai Jin didn't accept Li Su Su's kindness at all. For the sake of the lives of the three realms and four continents, Li Su Su had no choice but to take Tan Tai Jin back to his room when he saw Tan Tai Jin who had passed out from the cold. In order to warm Tan Tai Jin's body, Li Su Su spared no effort to warm him up with her body and asked Chen Tao to help him burn hot water for Tan Tai Jin to take a bath. Whenever Tan Tai Jin was on the verge of death, the demon in his heart would appear, even tempting him to risk his soul to it sooner or later. But Tan Tai Jin is not sentimentally attached to life, frankly, he is willing to give away both his body and soul, but the devil said that Tan Tai Jin wants to taste the suffering of the world and absorb endless resentment, when the pain reaches its peak and life comes to an end it is the time of sacrifice. Li Su Su wanted to find the evil bones in Tan Tai Jin's body. She groped for Tan Tai Jin's whole body while he was unconscious. But was caught by Tan Tai Jin who woke up halfway. Tan Tai Jin was about to return to the lake to punish him by kneeling, but Li Su Su stopped him and said that the punishment was over. Li Su Su originally thought that he would sleep on the same bed with his enemy Tan Tai Jin, but learned from Chun Tao that Yi Shi Wu would whip Tan Tai Jin every night before going to bed. Li Su Su found the whip, but the kind-hearted she couldn't bear to do it to Tan Tai Jin. Li Su Su woke up in the middle of the night and found that Tan Tai Jin had a high fever, so she had to call Lai Chun Tao to cook antipyretic medicine, feed the medicine to Tan Tai Jin herself, and take good care of him. It was already noon when Li Su Su woke up the next day. She came to the dining room and saw Yi Shi Wu's family. Li Su Su originally thought that she would be reprimanded, but her grandmother came up to greet her with care, and her father and aunts also cared for her, which made her feel the family affection that belongs to the world. The grandmother was worried that Yi Shi Wu's reputation for pushing Yi Bing Shang into the water would be bad. Li Su Su simply said that she would apologize to Yi Bing Sheng, but the grandmother thought it was unnecessary. At this time, Yi Bing Sheng returned home after giving the porridge. Looking at the beautiful and kind-hearted Yi Bing Sheng, Li Su Su finally understood why Xiao Lin and Tan Tai Jin both liked her. 
Tan Tai Jin went to the kitchen to eat, but the kitchen boy made things difficult for him, telling him to clean up the kitchen dishes and eat now. Li Susu learned from Chun Tao's mouth that Tan Tai Jin usually eats with his servants. She came to the kitchen and found that the servants in the mansion were embarrassing Tan Tai Jin, and she reprimanded the servants in the mansion who watched the food. Seeing Tan Tai Jin eating leftovers, she stopped Tan Tai Jin and reprimanded Tan Tai Jin without refuting the insults of the servants. She took Tan Tai Jin back to the room and prepared meals for him, but Tan Tai Jin refused. It turned out that on the night of Qixi Festival half a year ago, Yi Bingsheng met Xiao Lin in the palace and went to the garden. Yi Shi Wu found the magic drug for knotting spring silkworms in order to facilitate the good things between Yi Bingsheng and the fifth prince Xiao Liang, but that day Tan Tai Jin being embarrassingly stopped by Xiao Liang, he accidentally ate the drugged snack, and Yi Bingsheng's portion was also accidentally eaten by Yi Shi Wu, causing the two of them to cook rice, and there were many witnesses in the palace. General Yi can only ask for a marriage for the two. And since the two got married, Yi Shi Wu has been tormenting Tan Tai Jin, and her temperament has become more distorted and vicious. In order to prove that no drug was added to the meal, Li Susu had to eat the meal himself to prove it, and ordered Tan Tai Jin to come here for three meals a day in the future, and Tan Tai Jin was not allowed to eat those dirty things again. His Majesty Sheng told Xiao Lin that Tan Tai Wuji of Jingwa was about to die, and thought that the proton Tan Tai Jin was useless, but Xiao Lin thought that if Tan Tai Jin was killed, his successor Tan Tai Ming Lang would get his wish. His Majesty Shangguo wants to test His Majesty Shangguo's mind, to see if he can return to Jingguo and disrupt Jingguo's government. If he doesn't have this talent, he might as well take the opportunity to kill him. Episode 3, Li Susu investigates Tan Tai Jin, Li Susu told Chen Tao to take good care of Tan Tai Jin, and if he had anything to do with pretending to be a ghost, he must report it to him. Chen Tao told Li Susu that the servants in the mansion often saw Tan Tai Jin talking to various animals, but Li Susu didn't believe it at all. Li Susu mistakenly thought that Tan Tai Jin had no one to speak, and eventually his mind was twisted and became a demon god. She simply followed Tan Tai Jin to study his behavior. Li Susu asked Tan Tai Jin if he felt resentment from being embarrassed and tortured by others, and if he wanted to kill Yi Shi Wu. But Tan Tai Jin said that it doesn't matter what he thinks. After all, he can't change others. And whether there is hatred or resentment in your heart is meaningless. Li Susu thinks that Tan Tai Jin did not do bad things 500 years ago, but that people have been doing bad things to him all the time. Maybe he became a demon god because of a series of tragedies. Maybe there is someone who cares about him and cares about him, and maybe he won't fall into the devil's way. Chen Tao went to the clothing store to buy winter clothes for Tan Tai Jin, but because it didn't fit the size, she had to modify it herself and secretly gave it to Tan Tai Jin. Yi Ziyu accidentally saw Tan Tai Jin put on his new clothes. Yi Ziyu scratched his clothes on purpose. But Li Susu just happened to see him. Li Susu reprimanded his brother and asked him for compensation. Li Susu originally wanted Tan Tai Jin to throw away the broken clothes, but Tan Tai Jin refused the request. Chen Tao came to report to the palace to let Tan Tai Jin enter the palace. Li Susu thought that Tan Tai Jin still had contact with the palace people, so he simply followed him into the palace. After Li Susu entered the palace, she found Tan Tai Jin's residence in the palace. She wanted to know about Tan Tai Jin's life before. After meeting His Majesty, Tan Tai Jin confessed that he didn't want to know the news of Jingguo, and Jingguo and King Jing were strangers to him, so he didn't care. Seeing that King Sheng wanted to play the game of fighting between Snipe and Clam, he simply stated that he had no intention of being emperor in power, he just wanted to live a simple life. Li Susu came to the residence in Tan Tai Jin's palace and saw that Ingsun, the mother who raised Tan Tai Jin, sarcastically revealed that someone wanted to kill Tan Tai Jin. Director Wu found Tan Tai Jin and wanted him to help frame the evidence of Xiao Lin and Yi Zhao's collusion, but Tan Tai Jin knew in his heart that Xiao Lin was the only one who treated him sincerely in Chengdu City. He didn't want to harm Xiao Lin, 
so he simply refused the matter. Manager Wu threatened Tan Tai Jin with Yu Insen's life, but Tan Tai Jin was unmoved. Director Wu was very angry at being rejected and planned to have Tan Tai Jin killed, but he didn't expect to be killed directly by the hummingbird who could speak. Xiao Lin learned that many people in the city disappeared in their sleep for no reason. He suspected that a monster had entered the city. He reported the matter to His Majesty, and His Majesty ordered someone from Bazaishan to help Xiao Lin investigate the matter. My little uncle. Li Susu learned from his party in the palace that Tan Tai Jin was not doing well in the palace, that's why he was so pessimistic and hopeless. Xie Gu gathers strength by absorbing resentment and pain, so Tan Tai Jin suffers so much pain. Li Susu learned from his father that there are monsters haunting the city today, and that director Wu in the palace was killed by a hummingbird just because he said a few words to Tan Tai Jin, which is very strange. Tan Tai Jin controls hummingbird to kill manager Wu, but he also thinks that the current situation cannot allow others to let him go, and he wants to try to leave Shenghua. Li Susu searched Tan Tai Jin's whole body, but did not find any clues that he killed manager Wu. He also said that he would search Tan Tai Jin every day in the future, and warned him not to play tricks. The monster in the city was haunted at night, and accidentally discovered that although Yibing Shang was human, he had the aura of a monster on his body, so he simply took him away. This monster collects all kinds of unwillingness and resentment from human beings, just to make the flowers of nightmare bloom all over the mountains and plains, so that it can turn demons into demons. The next day, Li Susu learned that Yi Bingsheng disappeared last night, and Xiao Lin brought Pang Yixi, a doctor from the palace, to the mansion to check. Disciple, best at subduing demons and eliminating demons. But Pang Yiji checked, but couldn't find anything unusual in the mansion. Tan Tai Jin learned from the crow's mouth that the monster brought the people from the city to Bonjin Mountain in the southern suburbs, and used them to grow flowers, and Yi Bing Sheng and Yu Yingsen were there. On the other hand, the monster also learned of the existence of Tan Tai Jin from Yu Yingsen's experience, and believed that Tan Tai Jin would definitely turn it into a demon and it planned to use Tan Tai Jin to cultivate the flower of nightmare. Li Susu found that Pang Ishi's formation method was not good at learning, so he simply set up the formation by himself. The monster found Yi Mansion following Tan Tai Jin's smell, but Pang Ishi's formation did not trap the other party. Li Susu saw the other party's intention to attack the West, and saw that its real intention was Tan Tai Jin, so Li Susu came to save people, but was taken away by the monster in the end, before Tan Tai Jin left clues about Yi Bingsheng in the house. Xiao Lin found the clues after Tan Tai Jin was captured, and took Pang Yiji to Bonjin Mountain. Li Susu woke up on Bonjin Mountain, and she found that the dream demon wanted to use the nightmare flower to become a demon. Tantajin discovered that Li Susu actually knew Yu Yingsen, and guessed that Li Susu was investigating herself. Li Susu wanted to save Yi Bingsheng, but the mist made her and Tantajin faint at the same time. The unconscious Tantai Jin and Li Susu came to the Yue tribe and saw their mother marrying Tantai Wuji for the sake of the tribe. 